Hi everyone, my name is Chris Queeth. I'm a fitness and sports instructor for PSP Kingston, and today we're going to be talking about horizontal pressing. Uh, it's a pretty fundamental movement pattern, um, and most people when they think of horizontal pressing think of the bench press, which we're definitely going to talk about today, um, but we're going to also talk about different variations of training that movement and what, how we warm it up, um, how we train it for certain goals, um, and for certain skill levels. I've kind of broken it down into three different um, variations of pressing, of horizontal pressing. So we have body weight, uh, so different variations of push-ups and how to progress those. We have some dumbbell variations or some free weights, um, look, both looking at single arm, incline, and flat bench. Um, and we're also going to look at some barbell stuff, so the regular bench press, some incline, and some floor press, and the reasons why we use each one of those. They're usually used depending on your skill level, depending on potentially if you're in some sort of strength sports, um, and will change depend on how many reps you're doing, how many sets you're doing. We're gonna talk a lot about that today. Um, so horizontal pressing um, is pushing in front of the body. So we're not talking about overhead pressing today. It's anything that's kind of in front of you. Um, so that's why incline kind of falls into that spectrum. Um, to start, uh, I want to start with the body weight um, and how to progress that. So not everyone can just drop down on the floor and you know they'll give me 20 thing. Um, not everyone can do that, and we can talk about how to progress that movement a little bit. Um, some people like to start on the knees if they can't do it, but I tend to fall into more of an incline push-up. And we're gonna use the barbell today to kind of show you that. Um, because it's progressible more than what the knee is, and it's more like a regular push-up from the toes. So, roughly 45 degrees here. You want roughly just inside the shoulders, and you want to bring the chest right to the bar. Nice and controlled. Once again, once this gets too easy, you simply bring the bar down, and we progress more and more towards a traditional push-up. Um, a big thing with pushing is joint stacking. You've probably heard this in not just the pushing movements, but also through squatting, deadlifting, all that other stuff. Biomechanically, it sets you up to put you in your strongest position. So for pressing, we want to talk about making sure the wrist and elbow are stacked, so when we want to do a push-up, we want to make sure, a lot of people tend to have their hands really up high, that kind of puts you in an awkward position. Kind of bring it back down towards your chest. You want roughly a shoulder to elbow angle of about 45 degrees. So we're not in really tight, we're not in way out wide, we're kind of in the middle. Hands are back, press. It's much harder for me to bring it in and my elbows be outside and do the same thing. Not as efficient, and you're not going to be in as strong of a position. Then to go from the incline, okay, we intensify that to the push up by limiting that angle. And then to extend it even further with the push up is we come to a hand release position. This is making sure we're getting a complete range of motion. That is important, as many in the military know from push-up test in their PT test is finding that test angle where you want it to be parallel with the ground. Hand release push-up brings you all the way to the floor, release it, back up. That is our maximum range of motion and eliminates the reflexive response of the muscle at the bottom that can help with the ascent back up. That is more working towards the power of the push-up and you'll see some people progress that even further and do an explosive push-up where they push themselves off the ground. We're not gonna talk about that today. Now while body weight is great for at home or for some of your accessory stuff, we wanna talk about building muscle and overall hypertrophy of the pressing movements, so both the chest, triceps, and the shoulders. That's where we really wanna optimize our use of resistance and dumbbells is a great tool. Um, we're going to go over a dumbbell bench press, so flat, 
we're going to look at some single arm and the incline. So we'll kind of talk about where you should be in the incline and why we're going to be doing that. What's the purpose of changing that angle? Um, for a dumbbell bench press or for any of these bench presses, to get set up is extremely important. So many people, when they first start with dumbbells, are kind of unsure of how to get into a proper position. I like to start nice hinge pattern, okay? You're gonna stand them up to your hips. Okay, you're gonna come down from a seated position and bring them to your knees. And from here, we're gonna rock back with the weight. We don't wanna lift it, we're gonna kind of just rock into this position. This takes some practice but it's very efficient in terms of getting it up, especially when you have a heavy weight. You can also rock back into a nice easy position to unload. Some people, if it's a lighter weight, they'll be okay with starting in this position and coming down, but it's a little bit tougher. So from here, for a regular dumbbell bench, we're pressing, so arms are nice and locked in. Nice, slow, controlled descent. Same thing, 45 degrees. Wrist stack over elbows and doing your reps. I'll show you five. And we finish at the top. Elbows, or sorry, knees come to the dumbbells and we rock up and set. So that is a simple way of looking at the dumbbell bench press. Why should we use the dumbbells? The dumbbells in these ranges of motion. Um, you have a little bit more free range of motion. So when you hear free weights, it's, you have, you're not as stuck to a barbell where if you're stuck in that motion, your joint angle and everything can change. I do try to get everyone to try and stay at that 45 degree angle from their shoulder to their elbow. So they're not up tight and they're not too wide. But I'm also looking at the wrist angle. So when we look from a single arm perspective, the dumbbell is not straight, it's not horizontal to me, it's somewhere in that 45, and that kind of just goes with where the arm wants to go in its most neutral grip. With the single arm, it requires the legs to be heavily engaged to help stabilize the rest of the body. That's important, especially when we move on to the barbell bench press and when you use that under heavy load. This is also a great way to look at imbalances from left to right. So if you're doing some barbell work and you see a huge difference in your lockout from left to right, this is a great opportunity to address that. So if your weak side is the left side and you can only do five reps, don't do more than five reps on the right side as we try to create that balance in the overall strength from side to side. The incline gives us another opportunity to challenge the movement at a different angle. One thing I want to touch on before we get too far is where that angle is. Some people are way too high. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We're looking more than that probably 25, 25 to 35 degree angle for this. Okay. We want to kind of find a middle ground between the overhead press and the bench press, but we still want it to become a bench press, so a little bit more towards that side. Same thing, nice neutral spine. We want to bring the dumbbells to the knees, and rock back. 45 degrees in terms of elbow to the shoulder and the wrist. So if you were looking up at the, the dumbbells, they're roughly at the four and the eight on a standard clock. Now you see I'm not pressing outwards. That's really tough. We want to still press straight up. That changes the angle. Are we still working the same muscles? Yes. With the incline, typically more of the upper chest in terms of where we're tearing the muscle to create growth. 
Um, but still, triceps, pec major, all the same muscles, just in a different way. That's important because we're changing the stimulus and the change of stimulus and challenge is what we need to really grow the muscle to create hypertrophy. So that's extremely important. And that's why you typically see bodybuilders when they're using these movements. It's a lot of dumbbell work. So now we're gonna move to everyone's favorite, the bench press. Um, everyone's favorite lift to do most likely in the gym. Um, it's the one where you can get the most weight, especially for the upper body, um, typically known as the bro lift. Um, but it's usually more technical than most people think. Um, most people view it as just an upper body movement, but it's very much so a powerlifting, um, full body movement. Uh, once you get into the rep ranges of that one to five range, uh, where your setup is gonna be crucial. From your grip, all the way down to where your feet are placed into the floor, um, can really help you in terms of whether you hit that PR or not. Um, so, to start, we're gonna start with our hands and where those get set up. So, ideally, eyes going directly underneath the bar for your setup, and for most people, if we were to go straight up and then slightly outside the shoulder, that's typically where your ideal grip's gonna be. The reason for that is, we've talked about it a lot before, is that 45 degree angle from the shoulder to the elbow is our most advantageous position. So that is a great opportunity if you bring an empty barbell to your chest, kind of feel where that 45 degree angle is, and stick to that. So try to remember where the landmarks are on the bar. Now while your hands are important, we also want to make sure our shoulder blades are stacked and packed in nice and tight. Okay, so those are together. We want to make sure our feet are driving into the floor. That helps include, or basically include our glutes and our core to the equation and everything's contracted nice and tight. So you find your grip once you're nice and tight. We're going to push off straight, bring it above the chest, and bring it down. Most people, when they think of a bench press, will go really wide. Remember that 45 degrees, which will typically take you from the nipple line down to the bottom of your rib cage, somewhere in that area. But making sure the very bottom, that our wrists and elbows are stacked. What you'll typically see as well once you get into the powerlifting realm is a very high arc bench. We're not going to talk about that today. That's really only important if you're going to be competing in those. Um, however, the reason before those is to create an advantageous angle and limiting the range of motion, where when we're strength training, we're trying to develop the muscle. We actually want to increase that range of motion, motion to make sure you're nice and strong. Now for the incline bench press, we want to set up fairly similar, but obviously we change the joint angle of the bench. Similar to what we did with the dumbbells. So this is roughly 35. We're going to come back, set up our eyes underneath the barbell. You want to grab a very similar grip to your flat bench. You're going to treat it as the same. You want to really create some drive and some support through your feet. We want to make sure our upper back's nice and engaged. We're going to lift straight up, out above the chest, all the way down. We want to create full range of motion. This is what makes the incline harder. The least advantageous joint angle and we're extending the range of motion. Same thing, bring it to your rack, and then down for safety. Once again, you're not gonna be able to lift as much weight with the incline compared to the flat, but it's creating a different stimulus for the similar muscle structures that help with this move, movement. Another quick point to add is where the rack is set up. So compared to when we were flat, I was roughly a 19 on this in terms of where the holes are, compared to now I'm about a 24. And that's important in terms of your setup, in terms of you're not starting doing a rep from like way down here, you're just lifting enough to get the bar out of the way, 
of the little hooks and out. And easily puts you back into the rack by slamming against it and sliding down just a little bit. Compared to it was all the way down here, you went to rack it, you tried to slide it down, it just gets really awkward. So the setup of where the bar is important, both for the flat and for the incline. And to finish off with some barbell work, we're going to talk about the floor press and how it can be advantageous for working on a certain part of your bench press, typically the upper half of a lockout. Um, it's a pretty shoulder-friendly exercise as well. You'll typically see straight sport athletes like powerlifters use the, if they're their deload or if they're having some nagging shoulder issues. So to set up, very similar. We want to make sure our upper back's engaged. Our grip is nice and good in terms of we're joint stacking appropriately. However, we want to eliminate the leg drive with the floor press. We want to create a lot of the stimulus through the upper body um, and create a focus that way. It's not necessarily to lift as much weight as possible, but it's more to create a hard stimulus for the musculature that's going to move this load. So similar grip. We're going to walk out, bring it above the chest. You can go flat legs or even feet flat, as long as we're not driving through the legs. We're going to descend slowly to levels of the floor, back up. Same thing, bring it back up. and down. This one you want to ensure the control as we descend. That's important, especially with our elbows coming to the floor. We don't want to be smashing our elbows down. Um, and that also, that eccentric part is actually what helps build the movement and creates control during that movement, which is important as the load gets heavier. So to recap on our topic horizontal pressing today, um, big factor here is we are pushing in front of our body. So from a body weight standpoint, uh, to help progress the push up, if you can't do a ton of them, working on some incline and eventually bringing that incline down as you progress and you're able to do more and more reps. Going to a traditional push up, and as you progress into more reps of those, potentially going into a hand release push up, um, which just kind of intensifies everything a little bit. Then, if we want to work on building the musculature that helps that movement, so the chest, shoulders, and the triceps doing some dumbbell work, some doing uh, some flat bench press, uh, some single arm is great for working on imbalances and creating leg drive to help stabilize the lift. And in the incline, uh, which both for the barbell and the dumbbell, just helps create a different stimulus, uh, which will help with overall growth of the movement. As we move to the barbells, the traditional bench press, we talked lots about that today and how technical it can be and making sure everything's dialed in and making sure you have a checklist in your head as you go to make sure you're set up appropriately. Um, that flat bench press is a great strength measure and is what most people use in their programs to see how they're progressing in the horizontal pressing um, fundamental movement. Um, incline bench press, same thing. Um, making sure that we have the bar set up in the rack appropriately so you're not starting out with a half rep. Um, and then the floor presses, there's a great opportunity um, to be a little bit more shoulder friendly um, and work a little bit more focused on the upper body by taking out the leg drive. Tons of different options, tons of opportunity in terms of how to develop a horizontal pressing pattern uh, and progress your overall fitness. Um, once again, my name is Chris Leak. I'm a fitness and sports instructor for PSB Kingston. Make sure to check out our social media channels on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And have a great rest of your week. PSP Kingston, the health and wellness provider for the military community.